Welcome to Harassus, the Global Vision Community. I am Ord Levinson, and it is my great privilege to be the moderator today. I want to begin by welcoming. Former president of Latvia, Rosalia Artiaga Serrano, former president of Ecuador, Mohamed Al Baradai, former vice president of Egypt, and Nobel Peace Prize laureate. And the two we are waiting for are Ahmed Daftogulu, former prime minister of Turkey, and Ehud Olmet, former prime minister of Israel. The Agora, that open place of free speech and assembly. Must it continue into the digital age to ensure that democracy lives in spite of fake news, public distrust, and social media echo chambers? Shakespeare, that great moderator of human nature and life, had a take on democracy and on what fuels a revolt. Coriolanus is on his way to that open place of assembly, the Senate, at a time of famine, and says to Brutus, "They know." The corn was not our recompense, resting well assured. They, the people, were accusing the senators of stealing the corn. Fake news was echo chambered even then, and was a powerful weapon for an attack on the elite. Coriolanus concludes with what happens when the majority is given into because of fear, and says, "Thus we debase the nature of our seats and make the rabble call our cares fears, which will in time break open the locks of the senate." And bring in the crows to peck the eagles, but was Coriolanus right when he said, "If we give people absolute power, this nourishes disobedience and feeds the ruin of the democratic state." Crows pecking eagles, powerful imagery, but of contempt or of miscommunication. Democracy as an institution is arguably not the same as democracy as communication. And can the digital age, no longer revolution, be seen for what it is—a powerful method of conveying knowledge? In the 15th century, the mechanical movable printing press totally revolutionised power structures. Knowledge is power, as the saying goes. Martin Luther allegedly summed up the role of the printing press in the Protestant Reformation as printing is the ultimate gift of God and the greatest one. The internet and social media are here to stay. How can it revolutionize its revolutionary powers be harnessed? Is democracy without internet as a source of knowledge blind, but internet without democracy lame or even dangerous? If democracy was cradled in the agora, what can we further learn from that? What is the fundamental principle of the agora? Societal, direct, visible authorship. No loss of dignity. Could the lack of these, as well as the reason and emotion, be fueling the revolt against an antiquated system of democracy? But is democracy not booming, at least in desire all around the world? Can I borrow an idea from Tolstoy and wonder if all happy democracies are alike, all unhappy democracies are unhappy in their own way? As much as I might be able to talk the talk. I have never walked the walk like all of you have. Vera, may I ask you please to begin with your thoughts? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When the Greeks gathered in the Agora, they laid the groundwork of what we now call democracy. But it is not at all the same sort of institution. That we are having in the countries that are democratic, de facto, or not just in name. In fact, if a country has the word democratic in its、uh, in its title and its designation, you can almost be sure that it's a to totalitarian state. But consider the Greeks who gathered in the agora.、Uh, they were wearing togas that were washed by their slaves. Uh, and, the, and their wives were locked up inside their houses.、Uh, they they were very、uh, very limited in number, and the participation of those eligible to vote
uh, was extremely, extremely limited. It was an elitist group. And as the broader and broader participation of different sectors of society spread in other parts of the world, the noted are governed uh, for centuries, in fact for 2,000 years. We had hierarchical systems, let's talk about the European continent, which at the moment uh, I know about the most. The, uh, the hierarchical system of a monarchy had supposedly the theoretical power of the absolute monarch, and then a hierarchy of uh, descending uh, order of rights, uh, Charlemagne, uh, Charles the Great, had his peers. The peers had a say. The Holy Roman Emperor was elected by electors. The electors had a special power, uh, and, uh, and this gave them more power than the ordinary dukes uh, and princes of the church who ruled over certain lands. But uh, consider the citizens as democracies were slowly uh, taking shape, especially after the French Revolution. Women, uh, the French had their revolution, but women in France gained the right to vote politically very late indeed. In fact, shamefully late, much later uh, than the new republics that were created in Europe after the end of the First World War. Switzerland was even worse. Uh, in giving the right of vote uh, to women. Uh, in my country, Latvia, uh, my native city, Riga, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, uh, the municipal elections uh, were restricted to homeowners. absolutely not representative of the population at large. Uh, we had a beloved uh, mayor of Riga at the beginning of the 20th century, a Scot by the name of Armistead. Uh, and when he saw that the uh, minority uh, Latvian autochthonous population uh, was somehow uh, managing uh, to push itself into public life and wishing to participate in decision making, what he did is he raised the census for the value of a house, the property that somebody had to possess uh, in order to be able to vote in the municipal elections so that the uh, then a German majority would keep power in their hands. And we could multiply ad infinitum the sort of examples. In other words, today, when we are talking about democracy, we would like to see a total democracy. Everybody has a right to vote. Prisoners, uh, everybody over the age of 18 or depending on the age. Uh, the age of majority. And what does it mean? It means that we are giving rights to the eagles uh, and, and to the chickens uh, and to the crows uh, and to everybody in between. The whole population is extremely varied. It is not an elite. Uh, it is not an assembly of philosopher kings. They are very human with all their foibles uh, and their weaknesses. Some of them more weak than others. And that is the challenge of a total democracy where theoretically everybody has the power to intervene, but not everybody has either uh, the intellectual skills nor the patience to acquire the information necessary. And this is where we have to find the balance. If you start drawing the line and saying you must be the owner of property worth so and so much the euros or dollars or, or whatever currency, it's a very dangerous and slippery slope of exclusion of entire groups, right. such as in the case of countries that still do not give the vote to women, do not give the same rights to women, and so on and so forth. The agora is everybody, eagles and crows and every bird in between. Thank you very much, Vera. Uh, uh, Rosalia, may I ask you to please express your views? Thank you. Uh, good morning or good afternoon to everybody. Um, I'm happy to be in this event and I, I really appreciate a lot that you introduce uh, this uh, um, 
uh, this uh, panel about the future of democracy, talking about the agora or the agora, as we said in Spanish, uh, because it's almost the same. It's the same word. Um, and uh, of course, we all know, know about the how the democracy was uh, created and was built it, because it's uh, a continuous building effort about democracy. But it's also interesting to analyze what's happening in this world now, in this uh, coronavirus world, uh, where we see uh, situations of uh, um, non-democratic examples. For example, what's happening in, in our countries in Latin America when uh, a so-called socialism of the 21st century is destroying democracy. Uh, we saw what's happening in Bolivia now with a former president, a woman, Janine, Janet, is in jail. Mm? Or we saw in other parts of the world what's happening in Belarus, where uh, a, a president, a women president that won the election, is, is, was not recognized and has to leave the country. What kind of democracy are we uh, growing up? What kind of situation are happening in our countries. Uh, we, of course, we recognize that elections are very important. It's a way to demonstrate that democracy is, is running in a country, is going on. But it's not only a mechanism of uh, voting of elections. You have to maintain it. And I feel that especially, and I want to talk more on the side of Latin America, that uh, they are two big issues that are going against democracy. One is um, poverty, because people feel excluded for everything, from everything, excluded, because they don't have good education, they don't have access to health, they don't have access to good food, to hope, to the possibility of dreaming in a future, in a better future. The example of Venezuela is chaotic. More than 5 million Venezuelans abandoned the country during the last years because uh, they don't have any possibility to survive there. And Venezuela was one of the richest countries. Uh, Venezuela has more oil than Saudi Arabia or the Arab countries. Venezuela is one of the big exporters or was one of the big exporters. But poverty is one big issue that's happening in, in this side of the world. And the other uh, fighter against democracy is corruption. Corruption is like a cancer, a cancer for democracy, because a lot of people uh, lose uh, credibility on, or, or, or lose the faith in democracy because they saw corruption everywhere. And politicians, we are big guilty in, on, that, on that side, because uh, corruption is, uh, is happening a lot in the... Uh, most uh, representative uh, um, places on, on, on the countries with presidents or former presidents uh, or uh, with problems with justice or going uh, away saying that they are exiled but probably they are they are right, running from the justice process in the countries uh, then what we are waiting in the future how we can maintain in this, in this digital age the possibility to continue believing in the democracy like the best of the ways of governance in, in any country. And we have to... democracy in homes, to maintain democracy in schools. And for sure we know that women, we have a big part of this, because in most of the countries, 70, 70 or 80 percent of the teachers are women. Uh, the teachers are women, especially in, in, in um, primary school and in secondary school. Then education is very important. The other, the other um, actor is the role of justice, how justice is acting how uh, the people that is um, committing some kind of, of, of bad situations or taking the money from the public 
uh, from the uh, budget of, of the government, how they have to be penalized. And because if you we don't that have that kind of examples of how the the justice is going on in a country, we are never ha going to have a solution for this situation. Inclusion is very important, and of course, we think that democracy is one of the most inclusive ways in in in, in, in any part of the world. But it's not happening because we feel that a lot of people is not considered included. One sector is young people, young people. They don't feel included. They are trying to act through social networks with social media and, and try to do some kind of things of that. But the problem is that they don't feel included. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Rosalia. I'm going to come back to those questions that you raised, of what are big, the big problems, uh, uh, the, the two that you raised, corruption and poverty, and of course, education. Uh, Mohammed, may I please ask you to uh, set out your views? Thank you very much, Ordi. Well, as just explained, democracy is a work in progress and lots of challenges we are facing and will continue to face. But what we call a democracy, grosso modo today, is being actively challenged right now, a particular challenge by those who champion different value system and forms of government. We are pretty much split globally right now in many ways, if in terms of population, what, what have you. It, the merits of democracy and sustainability is also being questioned by many within the democratic societies. They feel their voices has been scuttled by private special interest groups and they have lost trust, as just mentioned, in the political class. The overarching criticism is that liberal democracy has contributed to and resulted in economic and social inequality and has fallen short in meeting people's needs and expectations or responding to their priorities. We are witnessing a growing level of disillusion with democracy that's being exploited by populists and authoritarians, providing simple solutions and quick fixes to com complex problems, while at the same time, of course, they are squashing freedoms and liberties. And this is even within Europe, we see that. Democracy as a form of communication, as you mentioned already, and a way of speaking truth to power, is also failing victim to the onslaught on the print media, which is becoming an easy prey to social media and is struggling to survive. Unfortunately, in many cases, it is no longer all the news that is fit to print, as we used to say, but all the, the news that bring you a buck right now is becoming completely commercialized. The social media platforms run by giant private corporation, not government, but private corporation, are struggling without much success to put the lid on tsunami of fake news, conspiracy theory, and sophisticated manipulation and influence. So we have two problems in our hands with modern democracy. How should we, should the governance modalities in terms of institutions, methods of representation and decision-making processes should look like? And how to communicate on the basis of facts and bring out the truth? In other words, how to separate the wheat from the chaff. It is apparent also that globalization has drastically limited the ability of national governments to cater independently to citizen demands and expectations. Most of the challenges we are facing today are challenges that require global solutions. 
and at the same time, international cooperation is under strain and is even on the decline. The present indignation of our government's handling of COVID-19 vaccine in terms of availability distribution is shared by many. There's a great sense of anger and indignation. The dismal side show, as I call it, of countries point the finger at each other and deflecting responsibilities is really depressing to watch. The mature cries of nationalism is a glaring example of the crisis of democracy we are facing today. There are many calls for re-evaluating the modalities of representative democracy by injecting a more direct participation, a modern agora of sorts. The Five Stars Party in Italy is an experiment in that direction. Some also suggest that we need deliberative bodies to deliberate and build consensus on highly contentious issues, such as how do we understand freedom? What is our conception of social justice? The, this thinking is informed by the increasing polarization in democratic societies, which we see it everywhere, where the center, the center is being squeezed. It is either left or right right now. In this, is this the road we should travel for the future? Turning to communication, social media is fast becoming the main source of information for most people, for, for most of us. But it regrettably morphed into the main platform to incite violence, manipulate elections, and spread fear and has also become a battleground for a smoldering ideological war. And I'm not talking about even the dark net or the deep net. How to strike a balance, so to speak, between the First Amendment, which is the right freedom to speak, of a speech, and fighting words, fighting words, inciting violence. How to distinguish between objective criticism and hate speech. And who is going to be the arbiter in this? Is denying access to social media, closing account, as we have seen, a remedy, a cancel culture, or simply addressing symptoms and not the causes? So these are all issues crucial to our ability to live in peace, freedom, and dignity. I would say this pandemic has provided us with an opportunity for a reality check. It is now up to us either to build better, as they say, or to slide back. Thank you. Mohammed, thank you very much, all three of you. As, as far as I can see, there are some very overlapping themes of uh, the uh, need to, um, if democracy is something that is a, a system in progress, the need for education, and uh, which uh, uh, Rosalia mentioned, and how to have a deliberative institution. But if we look at uh, where democracy is now, and uh, Vira, I think, in fact, the first country that gave women the right to vote was New Zealand in uh, 1893, um, uh, which was very interesting there as well. But what are the functions of a, of a government? And is democracy the best, the best way to do it? Which uh, for example, the functions of education, of health, of giving people the right to, to dignity, uh, and so on. There's also the problem which I think was mentioned about, uh, so I'm trying to look as to what you think would be the right type of democracy of the uh, the uh, economists' uh, index of the top uh, uh, democracies in the world, uh, which they based on five factors, electoral process, on functional government, on political participation, political culture, and civil liberties. The first four were Norway, Iceland, Sweden, and New Zealand, all of which did not have first past the post, which might answer one of the questions that I think uh, one of you raised about 
how people feel marginalized or just uh, uh, not included and the need to include everybody. Uh, for instance, Turkey, and I'm sorry, uh, uh, we still haven't had the participation of Ahmet Abdulu or Ahmet Ahmet. I know, for example, that in 2002, the threshold of entry into parliament is 10% uh, in, uh, in Turkey. So that in 2002, in the elections where the AKP, uh, the current uh, party of Turkey, got into power, they only had 34% of the vote. But because everybody that under 10% was not allowed to enter into parliament, they got two thirds of the seating votes in parliament. So these are the problems. And I don't know if democracy has to evolve, and I'd like your opinion into what, something to move away from the first past the post. To also, um, I like the idea, or maybe we can discuss, or you can discuss the idea from your experience of having some sort of um, deliberative communication, which both Mohammed and, uh, um, and uh, uh, Rosalia mentioned, some sort of educational system to deal with important issues like what is um, uh, freedom, what is justice, and and issues like that. So how, how can we put in place a, a system, perhaps using the internet, that would um, bring about uh, a more suitable democracy, if that is what is needed now because of the threat to the old democracy and the satisfaction of people. We know the whole Brexit uh, situation where only uh, the difference was two or three percent, so 48 percent of people feel disenfranchised in their, their view. Uh, I don't know if anybody would like to comment on these. If, if I may, uh, I think we have to remember uh, that uh, countries with truly uh, and really democratic institutions are a minority in the world. As I say, uh, there are a great number who will claim to be democratic, but they really, uh, in practical terms, are not. Elections are considered, as was mentioned earlier, uh, uh, one of the hallmarks of a democracy and, and the right to elections is certainly crucial. We saw it in the last um, American presidential elections, how a lot of contention um, revolved uh, around uh, the Democratic Party making a really sustained effort uh, to enroll on the electoral rolls uh, citizens who had been passive and had not been, uh, had not been uh, allowed uh, to participate. And when they were now entered on the rolls and were participating, uh, the result was not accepted by those who had been very happy with the previous uh, way um, that the electoral rolls had been constituted. Uh, the, uh, the second step is, of course, that the representatives whom we elect uh, should be uh, what they claim to be. And I think that is, of course, the, the biggest, biggest step in the uh, representative democracy. Everybody understands that we cannot, much as we might want to do so, and, and the Internet would allow it, on every single question we would have a referendum. Uh, in Switzerland, very wisely, the big political questions are seldom put to the referendum. They will ask you whether uh, every village should have roofs of the same color and that sort of thing more often than they will ask you about political uh, ideological questions, although they do from what time to time. We do have in most functioning democracies, we have a representative de uh, democracy and the way uh, these representatives do their job, uh, frankly, depends on what? It depends on the culture that bred them. Uh, as during my, my, my time as president, I was struck by the fact that the minute somebody got elected to parliament, they lost the confidence uh, of the electorate and newspapers felt that they were fodder for jumping on and, and being chewed alive uh, for every, every time they opened their mouths because, they, well, politicians, you see, are a special breed and, and one can say anything one wishes about them. And uh, it, it keeps some people who are very sensible talented people who would like to participate in governance, they simply are not ready to submit themselves to this trampling over by the press and by the, by the public, never mind the internet comments, which are absolutely vicious in many cases, uh, and they keep away. But look, uh, if you are going to chase away 
uh, the sensible, <laughs> intelligent, ah, honest people from governance. Uh, you are going to get others in their place whose morals are doubtful, uh, whose actions are greater than their, than their standards of ethics. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and uh, it would be very interesting to, to hear what other people were saying about the need, how we represent. So in Switzerland, I, I do know that the anybody can put something to a, a binding vote or if they achieve 100,000 uh, signatures, and then the government has to, uh, has to uh, implement it. But uh, how, do we, uh, how do we make a representative type of democracy that is more uh, of the people represent everything? And Mohammed, who seems to have left the yeah. thing by mistake, uh, are you still there, Mohammed? One, one more sentence. Right. Um, you mentioned uh, the case in, in Turkey where 10% uh, of the uh, electoral rolls uh, allows you to enter parliament. Latvia, in its first phase of independence, uh, after uh, the declaration of independence, had a 1% barrier for entering parliament. The result was a parliament so fragmented that the people representing one single party the single department, uh, the deputy ah. who would make the difference in the vote would be walking around uh, in the halls of parliament and say, has anybody a good offer to make me? I will vote for their... Uh, I, I, I'm going to interrupt you there because I see that uh, Ahmed Dr. Gulu has uh, managed to join us. We all come very much. So yes. we uh, have only another 15 minutes. I'm sorry we lost... But... Uh, if you are able to uh, perhaps uh, give your views, uh, we would like to listen to them because we haven't heard you as yet. And after I will make some comments about what you say about this, these challenges that we are having. Ahmed, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Thank you. Is it okay? My voice is clear. Is Your voice clear? is very clear to me, and I'd like to hear from the Prime Minister of Turkey. And uh, Al Baradai is back. So we have all everybody here except uh, Ermut Almet. So uh, uh, Ahmed, if you if you would like to speak, we'd very much like yeah. to hear that. Uh, good evening. Sorry for this delay. There was a technical problem where I am in another Anatolian city, so there was some connection problem. Uh, thanks for this organization. Should I continue or I want to listen first to you? No, I think uh, you, you need to continue because we only have another 15 want... odd minutes. And um, I, I, I've spoken and I'd rather hear you, to be honest. I'm sorry you haven't heard everybody else, but I'm sure they'll give some comments. Okay. Sorry, I missed this opportunity. Thank you very much this, this, for this uh, chance to see some of my old friends as well, like Baraday and uh, Madam President and many others. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the, uh, there is a challenge for uh, all of us regarding uh, the future of democracy. Uh, when we compare ancient, modern democracies, there are certain changes. But now we are in, uh, we, are, we need a new uh, paradigm of democracy in global age. Uh, during the modernity, uh, democracy has been seen uh, as a more procedural process uh, compared to the ancient uh, Greek democracy. What, is, what are the basic challenges in front of us? I want to emphasize four uh, important challenges in front of us regarding the future of our democracy. Today, uh, especially in last experience in many advanced democracies, we can see some a challenge in front of us. First is the ontological dimension of democracy. What is the wisdom of democracy is that it has said all human beings has, uh, are on the same ontological level or in the sense of freedom and equality. So every human being has the chance and capacity to make choice. Uh, this is the basis of democracy as the value. So without freedom and Equality, uh, both in modern times and today, it is difficult to revive and to live democracy as a uh, as a way of life. Uh, second, and another 
most important characteristic is the epistemological dimension of accessibility to knowledge. Today, in this sense, we have a, an important, uh, a very challenging uh, uh, period because uh, today we have the, uh, the globalization and new te te uh, telecommunicational facilities, communicational uh, co uh, uh, evolution, let me say. Today we have a huge capacity of access, access to knowledge. But what about the validity of knowledge? Uh, the, uh, Having this access does not mean that our choice in a democratic process would be based on the right information. information. And uh, in this sense, uh, manipulation of uh, knowledge, manipulation of information is a big challenge through social media or other means. And uh, today, everywhere in democracies, uh, the capacity of accessibility to information and the capacity of manipulating information has increased at the same time. So how will we control this? Without, uh, and, and we cannot, con uh, without damaging freedom of speech, because freedom of speech is the basis of democracy. Uh, preventing manipulation of uh, information without limiting freedom of speech is the basic challenge in front of us. Uh, the capacity of manipulation uh, may uh, distort the uh, information which will be used by citizens for their decisions. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this was not the case during the uh, modern paradigm of democracy. Although we had huge uh, uh, propaganda machines like during the time of uh, Nazis, uh, in, in Germany, but at least there was another chance to produce an alternative uh, way of uh, uh, showing the knowledge. But today, the capacity is huge. Nobody can control it. Uh, third challenge is regarding the ethical base of democracy, uh, which is transparency and accountability. Uh, without transparency, democratic the processes cannot be reliable. And for this transparency, again, we have to have access to all the informations provided for the decisions of the citizens. And accountability is the basic ethical characteristic of democracy. In autocratic systems, there is no accountability and there is no inclusivity. Uh, freedom and uh, equality uh, need uh, brings us to the inclusivity of citizens, while the autocratic regimes, uh, as, a, as, a, as an enemy of uh, democratic uh, ethics, they are pro preventing, uh, and we have observed this in last years in many countries, uh, there is no transparency, there is no accountability. And in order to prevent transparency and accountability, a huge machine of uh, uh, information, distorted informations are in the process. And lastly, more procedural wise, uh, democracy in modern times has been seen as a more electoral process. While we observe now, like in the case of Trump, uh, electoral process is not enough to define democracies. Democracy should be seen uh, as a participatory, participatory process. Uh, a, a continuing process, not just once and one time using a, a vote and accepting the rest of the political decisions by the elected person does not mean democracy. Democracy brings, uh, needs uh, a, a more uh, uh, logical process uh, based on participation, interaction, communication. Okay. Is it possible to revive uh, democracy definitely possible. But for this, what we need is leadership of and good models of democratic implementation. Thank you. Unfortunately, unfortunately that, that was what is missing, what was missing in last years. We have to produce alternative ways of good models of democracy, and we have this chance. And uh, using the new technologies, the new instruments, for the wisdom of democracy based on okay. freedom, 
quality. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those interesting uh, and rather important ideas. I'm going to open it up to whoever would like to say something, Rosalia or Mohammed. Yes, yes. Yes, Rosalia. please. Yeah, I, I was thinking about uh, uh, the new leaders because we have to work in new leaders to prevent and to avoid these cancers for democracy. And, and I think um, education is, is a tool um, and we have to use new technologies, but new technologies are for good or for bad. Then how we can use these new technologies, how we can use it. Um, we have to, to, to talk and to work with the young people uh, to avoid them to be contaminated with issues like corruption, because what, that, that's one of the most uh, biggest problem in, in this uh, in nowadays, even with the uh, coronavirus, we saw corruption in how to provide hospitals with medicines and how to do the, those, uh, this or that. Then it's so important to work on on uh, how to prepare the new leaders, and we are trying to do something like that in, in Latin America. Hope it works. Mohammed, do you have some comments? I, I think. It's obvious we have a lot of challenges with modern technology, with modern democracy right now. Uh, is representative democracy is accurate now or should we have more direct participation? Is referendum is a way? I mean, you mentioned already ref referendum sometimes is too complex to, to answer complex issues like Brexit or the Colombia peace deal. You know, so we is people need to feel that they are being heard and as Ahmed said that there is sense of accountability and equality and whether we go for uh, 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 parliamentary democracy represent uh, uh, the, a mix of a system presidential democracy I mean these are all issues we don't have one size fits all actually but we need to put our heads together because there is a lot of disillusionment right now. People are disillusioned and we need to provide answer. And I think the answer, the basic question people want to see that we, the, the politician or the system, is responding to their needs and priorities. Civil society is also, I should mention, is key to democracy. I mean, we talk about votes, but without a vibrant civil society, media, uh, you know, foundation, parties, you cannot really talk about... Votes are at the end, the tip of at the end of the of the of the process, not the beginning. Vaira, uh, we've got uh, only a few more minutes. I don't know when. A few more minutes. I think what is really what has really come out is that we we really have just begun the process to to look at how to bring about these various issues of accountability, of a development of what could be a democracy, on how uh, it's not just a once suddenly and then no no feedback from the people and what is a representative democracy and what is the function of the state to look after people and so on. I, I, I'm sorry that it is, this system is uh, uh, short-lived and time-bound because we're just really getting to know what are the issues which we could ground down on and find, find out. But Vera uh, and uh, Anna. One final word, if I may. I, I would say that a democracy is, is a social contract uh, between the citizens at large uh, and those whom they have entrusted uh, with the governance uh, of their country. Uh, that means that uh, there are expectations on, on both sides, but particularly on the side of the citizens. And in a democracy, we feel uh, that, well, citizens, for instance, pay taxes, and among those countries that you mentioned earlier uh, that are at the head of the list for good democracies, uh, people often pay very high taxes and are happy to do so by their own uh, accounts because they receive uh, the, they feel that the state cares for them, that their health is assured, that they have a minimum income, that they, that they have a roof over their heads, that there is a chance for their children to, to have access to education and all the things that supposedly rich countries offer their citizens, uh, but that even rich countries do not always offer to everybody uh, altogether. And of course, one of the things that has to be uh, overcome in the future is to stop that increasing gap between the very, very rich uh, and the very, very poor in so many parts uh, of the world. If the Gini index, that is the index that uh, shows the gap 
between the richest and the poorest uh, in the population keeps increasing even in the richest of countries. Imagine what it is when you compare the poorest countries in the world to the richest ones. This is an untenable situation, and I think this is where the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals are one part of the answer where over step by step there's some hope of improving things uh, if there's really su a sufficient will uh, and, and, and readiness uh, to follow up on them and to follow through. Ahmed, would you like to uh, come back on some remarks, you uh, or Rosalia, or anybody? We uh, we can stay on if you would like to go on a bit longer. I see we can go uh, go on for a few minutes. I'm 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 interested to know is there is there is there any suggestion that all of you could have for a a way of an electoral system?